previously, I've did, done a video uh, about some coins, um, and I'm going to do a, this video also about coins. The previous one was about a bunch of half dollars I got. Uh, this one is about a bunch of dollar coins that I got. So I went to the bank and I got a hundred dollars worth of dollar coins and so they gave me those and, and they were in rolls of uh, circulated coins. Uh, so since they're circulated that means there were a wide variety of them. I recorded lots of information about them. I recorded uh, what kind of series each one was. Was it a Susan B. Anthony? Was it a presidential dollar? Was it a Sacagawea dollar? Etc. There was also one foreign coin, coin, so there was also a Canadian dollar in there. Uh, I recorded the year of each coin, and I recorded which mint it came from, and I recorded if it was a presidential dollar, which president it was. So I recorded a bunch of information, and I'm going to use that to show you how to make some charts. So, first one, I'm just going to show you uh, an already made chart, okay? Um, this chart kind of looks like the chart I made in the other video, um, and uh, what uh, what's different about this is really there's only two things that are different. One is that uh, the there are gaps between these uh, these vertical bars. Um, if I wanted it to be a histogram, technically there should be no gaps in there. Um, I could also do things like, uh, uh, you know, have classes and whatnot so that I don't have just 1979 and just 1980 and so on in groups. I could have like 1979 to 89 and 1980 to 1990 and so on. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, the other thing that's different is um, I made this chart using uh, Excel's chart maker um, and when I did that, uh, I did not select histogram. The reason why is because uh, the way it generated this was to use these values here, the years, as uh, as the the x coordinate essentially, basically for labeling the horizontal axis here, and then these values here, the frequencies, the number of times that year came up, uh, as the y value. In other words, the height of each bar. Uh, that's not how you make a histogram. Uh, a histogram, y you can make it from this uh, when you're doing it by hand, but if you're going to do it in a program like Excel, uh, that's not how the data needs to be presented. In order to make it as a histogram, essentially what I would have to do is have the actual data, which would mean 1979 would appear 23 times in that data, and 1980 would appear two times in that data. And then these years here, from 1981 up to 1999, there would be none of them. And then 2000 would appear 37 times and so on. So, um, obviously I wasn't going to actually do it that way. Um, uh, because I didn't, there, there's no reason to use the raw data if you don't have to. Um, a summary distribution like this chart is fine. Uh, you just have to, to create the chart using the uh, column chart maker instead of the histogram maker. Okay, so how do you use that? So let's go to a different uh, uh, situation here. Um, so here are the series. Okay, so as I mentioned before, Susan B. Anthony dollar coin, Sock of Joya dollar coin, U.S. President's dollar coin, and a Canadian dollar. And I recorded the frequency of each. Okay. Um, while I'm here, might as well show you, if you don't already know how, if you want to check your total, right, I ordered $100 worth of uh, coins from the, uh, from the bank, so I can check to make sure, did they give me the right amount? So I can type equals, and then sum, open parentheses, and I can either just select these, or I could actually have typed in B2 colon B5. Close my parentheses, and we get 100, so... They did not cheat me out of a dollar or something, and they didn't give me extra stuff. You could argue I got cheated a little bit since a Canadian dollar is worth a little less than an American dollar, but I was not going to complain about that. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, let's move on to the actual chart. Okay, so uh, first of all, I can just make a column chart as is. But in a previous video, I talked about how when you have qualitative data, you can actually make what's called a Pareto chart. And there's two ways to do that. 
Uh, I'll show you one with the series here, and then I'll use the presidents for making the other one. Okay. So let's uh, let's do it the first way here. So first, I'm just going to highlight these. Okay. And then I'm going to click on insert. And here I've got a bunch of charts. Okay. Um, again, this is where histograms are, but that's not what we're going to do here. We're going to make a, a Pareto chart. Um, but if I just do this and go over here and make a column chart, it's not a Pareto chart, right? Pareto chart means you have the highest one first and then you move down as you move to the right. So the reason why is because I need to sort it if I'm going to use that chart maker. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get rid of that and let's sort this. Okay, so I can go to data, sort. I choose that I'm going to sort it by frequency. And Pareto charts start with the largest, so I change the order from smallest to largest to, to lar from largest to smallest. And press OK. And so there were more Sacagawea coins than any others, so that came first. Then there were 27 of the U.S. President coins, and then there were 25 of the Susan B. Anthony's, and then one Canadian dollar. By the way, you might have noticed these two I inputted by actually adding some values up. Um, the Sacagawea, I, there were 37 of them that were from the year 2000, and these are other frequencies for other years. For the U.S. presidents, this are two George Washingtons, two, two John Adams, and so on. So that's why those sums are in there. Anyway, let's go back to this. Again, highlight it. Insert. I'm going to go over here to the column charts here and select that. Okay, now we don't have titles in here, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, as before, I can uh, edit it through here, so I can just say um, series types, okay, and notice that it's already labeled on the bottom. Okay, this is pretty small. Let's let's make it bigger so that you can see it more easily. Uh, these are still not great, so um, let's see if I can format that. Okay. Okay, yeah, so the font size is only 9 there. So let's make that a little bigger. I don't know why I'm doing it that way. Let's try 11.5. Let's see if that, that is more readable. Yeah, that's a little bit more readable. Okay, and you can see the numbers here. And as usual with these charts, one of the nice things is if you hover over them, it tells you information about it. So, for example, this says, hey, this is the Susan B. Anthony, uh, and the value is uh, 25. That means there were 25 of them that appeared. Okay, I can also add a, um, a label over here if I want. Um, I can do that by uh, going over to add a chart element and axis title and primary vertical axis. Okay, and you can see it popped up there. Okay, and this was frequency. So add that in, and again, I'm going to go ahead and change that size make it 11.5 like the other one. Okay, oh, could help if I highlighted it. That would work better. Okay, so, and of course I can make them bigger uh, uh, if I want, but I'm going to leave them fairly small so it all fits on the screen. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. That Remember what I did is I sorted them first and then I made the column chart. Okay. However, uh, there is a, um, a Pareto feature in here. Um, by the way, again, I could go ahead and check to make sure that this value here checks out. Okay, 27 presidential coins, and sure enough, uh, I had 27 in here, so that checks out. Okay, so let's make a Pareto chart of this. So notice this time I'm going straight for it. I'm not doing any sorting first. And I don't want to because, uh, you know, in this case, I like having my data in order of where the, they are in terms of succession of presidents. Um, but I want the chart to be a Pareto chart. So I want the data to be unsorted, but I want the, the chart to be sorted by uh, highest frequency first. So leaving this alone, I can go over to insert. Okay. And go over here. And in recommended charts... Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, okay? None of those are Pareto charts, though, okay? And if I go in here, 
uh, again, none of those are Pareto charts. So, okay, how do we do it? What, what, what do we you know, Where is it? Okay, it's not in histograms uh, and so on. It turns out uh, this one you're only going to get by actually going to the main menu, insert, highlight chart, and in here we will have a Pareto chart. Okay, there are other ways to get to it, but this is the easiest way. Okay, so I'm going to select that. Now, something that is a little interesting is it, it gives you uh, the what's called a Pareto line here. I don't want that there. Uh, there are reasons why you might want that there. It's not something that I want to deal with at this time. So I could double click on it to bring up the formatting. I can also right, uh, yeah, right click on it or otherwise uh, bring up the formatting. And so notice it has the line here. It says automatic. I just changed that to no line. Close this out. And sure enough, it's all fixed to now. Okay. And I can change my chart title. Okay. I can add a label for that vertical axis. Okay. Um, once again, my, uh, uh, my size here is pretty small, um, so let's see, yeah, we don't want that. Um, this is not the best way to do it anyway, so what I'll do is I will do a right click and font there, although I should highlight that. There we go. Let's make this one bigger than before I made it 11.5. Let's make this one 14. Okay. Just so you can see that we really do get to choose. Okay. Um, and then I could go through it. I could do some changes in here. I could do a full format of the uh, of the chart. Okay. I can do a format chart area, and I can change lots of stuff in here. Okay. Uh, but honestly, the best way to learn that stuff is just to play around with it by yourself. So that is about it. I hope this helps you uh, with making some of the charts on Excel. Uh, and I will be making more videos with this data and more coin data in the future. Thank you very much.